welcome back to my channel <laughs> so today i'm going to be doing another tutorial i'm going to be showing y'all how to render products in blender so this tutorial is for people who already have their product um their object whatever product you have ready to go and you have those files so basically how i got my product i actually got somebody to make my mesh on fiverr so y'all could just go on fiverr and make whatever ask somebody to make what you need obviously you got to pay for it and they'll make it and make sure you ask them to give you the files for them as well like the uv map files and the the object files so you could import it to second life and the files to go into blender so you could do these rendering stuff so make sure you do all that before you could render your products and all that stuff and get get your get your meshes or whatever and yeah well and obviously you do not need to use fiverr there are so many other like platforms you could use to get mesh but i just use fiverr and i just searched up like second life meshers and then you could just pay somebody to make you a quick a quick little mesh or whatever so that's what i did but yeah let's just get straight into this video so this tutorial is just going to be how to render products in blender okay so you when you start out in blender you're probably going to get a box that will show up you literally just have to press x and hit delete and then that will delete that box and then you want to go to file you want to go to import and then you want to go to wavefront obj okay and then you just need to look for your product basically so go look for your product in your files so these are my products i have phones i make phones so these are going to be like my two products they are both separate meshes since this is the case and the phone so usually the first thing i do when they're in there they're going to look like this it will probably be like highlighted selected um you may only have one product so you may not have to like attach them but if you do have two products that need to get attached, like mine, all you need to do is go to the move tool and basically move it where it needs to get attached in, make sure it's in there properly, make sure it's good. You could use your hand to, you could use the hand at the corner here to move the view. You could also use this to rotate the camera and then you could use your mouse to zoom out and zoom in, um, but yeah. So it seems like I need to push this in a little bit because it's not really straight or whatever. So let's just like really get it in there. So yeah, it doesn't have to be really perfect because I'm really just gonna be showing the back of the phone when I render it, but it just has to be cute enough to the point where it doesn't look like weird when I render. And obviously uh, I'm not a professional at Blender. I just wanna make that little disclaimer because I am definitely not a professional. I'm still learning every day what i'm doing i literally only know how to render stuff in this so yeah um so you might get a little issue here where it's kind of like glitching out what you could do what you could do because you don't want it to like glitch to the phone like that so what you could do with this is you could get a stretch tool so you literally just hit scale i mean scale not stretch and actually you can right click and then you could set origin to geometry and then you could like stretch it basically so it fits in there better i didn't mean to stretch the phone but you could just stretch the phone i'm just gonna stretch the phone but yeah you could just stretch the product to make sure it fits so make sure there's no like it's not glitched in the phone or whatever make sure it looks good or whatever you got that done now what you want to do is we want to add the textures to our product because it's just like a gray mesh and obviously there is textures to it so what you want to do is you want to go to material properties then you want to click on the part that you want to texture and obviously you can just you can go back to the select box or whatever Click on the product that you want to texture, go to base color, where the circle is, Hit go, go to where like the little dot circle is, click that, click that, go to image texture, and then go to open, and then look for your texture basically. So obviously that, you, you would probably texture it with like a UV map or however the hell you textured it. Just find the texture 
and do it like this and now you may be like okay i added this why is it not showing you need to go to this little circle here so make sure you go to like this circle here like the second last circle and then it will show up it will show up the texture will show and then you want to add the texture for your case now because the case is still gray so you want to do the same step go to material properties go to the dot here go to image texture it will turn black because it's basically showing what you're texturing so it's like it's just going to turn black and then open and then find your texture again i'm just going to put on something random i'm putting one just something like real random i'm just going to put on this boom both the textures are on and ready to go period 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 Alrighty. so we got that step done now some people may not have to do this step but this step is we are going to link these items together so they're not separate meshes so i usually just hold shift and then i click on both of the meshes and then i right click and i hit join boom so now when you move them they're together so you don't got to worry about them being separate meshes and they're gucci Alrighty. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. So we got this step done. Now what we need to do is make the scene. So you got your textures in, you got everything in. Now let's just make our scene. So hit. So what you want to hit on your keyboard is Shift A. You want to go to Mesh. You want to go to Plane. Alrighty. Now it will show like a little plane at the bottom like that and like you could like you'll be able to move it and stuff what you want to do is you're going to want to stretch it because this plane is like too small so i usually just stretch it out a bit just to make it a little bit bigger whatever like this or whatever and obviously this render i'll be showing y'all is like a basic render i have did plenty of different renders but this is just a basic render okay so um let me show y'all let me show y'all let me show y'all Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to go to your rotate tool and you kind of want to just fix your product how you want it to look basically on the mesh because this is just going to be a basic render. You could like add different um, scenes to your background. So you could add that. Actually, I'm going to show you a site where you guys could get background, but you could literally just go on Turbo Squid. Some stuff you do have to pay for on here, so it's not always free, but you could like look up backgrounds and they have a lot of scenes that you could add but you a lot of these you have to pay for so a lot of these aren't free i don't know if there's any free scene places where where to get objects and stuff to put in blender but this is the only place i know so comment down below if y'all know any like free background scenes that y'all could put in all you have to do is really just go on google and just look up like blender mesh scenes whatever and then you'll you'll probably find you'll probably find a nice background but today we're just gonna be doing a plain background because this is just gonna be like a simple tutorial once you do this little plain thing you're probably gonna want to change the color of it so you want to click on click on the the blank plane the bottom plane click on that make sure you are in material properties then you want to go to new Okay, then you want to click on the little white strip here. And then you could just change the color of it, basically. So you could change whichever color you want just to color it. So I don't know. What, what, what color should we do today? I'm going to do like, I don't know. I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to do it like this. No, no, I don't like that. I don't like that. I'm going to do it like, like this. I'm going to do it like this. Okay, so you could do it like, oh, shoot. I didn't mean to turn it. <laughs> okay so you could do it like this and then you could you could uh, mess with all this stuff like you could make it more like metallic oh shoot what did I, what did I just do but yeah you could make it more like metallic and stuff you could just play with this like the roughness so this is like stuff how you could just play with Ooh. so this makes it really like rough makes it really like glossy so this is nice this is really nice as well y'all could just r really play with this this is all like personal preference sheen and all this stuff this is stuff that you could play with 
to make it look more realistic, I guess. But today we're just gonna be doing something basic. Alrighty, so you got your you got your background and you got your object. So now what you want to do is you want to add some lighting because it will probably be very dark. So what you want to do is you want to hit shift A. Shift A is like your best friend. Hit shift A again, go to light, go to, we could use a point, but y'all could really use whichever one you want to use, but I'm just going to use a point today. Then you want to go back to the move tool. And then this is your light bulb. So you kind of want to just move it where you think where the light would shine. And then if you want to see exactly how it would look rendered for a quick, quick second to see how the light would shine, literally go to the last circle ball here and it will show it in rendered mode, basically. Right. And then you could, you could kind of see how the light is going to like shine. And then when you hit control C, hit control C, then control V, and then you could copy the light and yeah, it's pretty nice. So you could copy the light and you could add more lights to make it more shinier and stuff to make it more brighter. So I usually add like a couple lights. They also have this other way where you could add lights as well. So if you do not want to add it like this. There is another way to add lights. So let me show y'all real quick how to add lights in another way. What you want to do is go to this site. It's called HDRIs. This is also another way of lighting that you could get. And if you go to HDRIs, they basically make like very like realistic lighting. So it depends what type of lighting you kind of want. This lighting looks nice. So I think I want to use this one. So they have like the quality here of how the lighting will be. I usually do mine in 8K, but honestly do whichever one your computer could handle. I usually just download the 8K lighting. So you just hit down, first you hit 8K, then you hit download. So first you just wanna look for any light that you want. You obviously you don't have to use this one and then it will download. And then I'm gonna show y'all how to import this light into Blender. So you wanna go to World Properties then you want to go to color you want to go to this little dot here then you want to go to environment texture alrighty so once you hit environment texture it'll, it'll probably look like all purple and stuff but don't mind that go to open and look for the HDRI that you just downloaded. So once you find that HDRI, it will show also, like the picture will show in the background, um, and also the lighting will show. So you probably won't need to add these lights anymore because you already are gonna have an HDRI lighting. I'll probably just keep one just to keep it cute, I guess. But then, yeah. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to go to after you add in your HDRI, you could add any you could add any lighting that you want. Again, fix up your scene. Now we are going to go to the real, real hood rendering stuff. We are we're gonna go to the real T. So what you want to do is you want to go to render properties. Then what you want to do is you want to go to so you're probably going to be on Eevee. You could render your things in Eevee. Eevee is good if you don't have that much of a good computer and you still want to render things. You could put it in Eevee. I like to put my stuff in Cycles because Cycles is like the realistic, realistic rendering. So this is Cycles. It will probably be like a little bit blurry and stuff, but this is the realistic, realistic rendering and your computer might go crazy. <laughs> your computer might start to go crazy okay so what you want to do is you want to make sure you check denoising so hit cycles first make sure you check denoising because denoising will make the picture less like kind of like grainy if that makes sense like it'll take out all the grains out the picture then you might want to turn your samples down you could keep your samples like this up too if you want but it will take a long time to render so I usually put my samples down to like 300 honestly because I don't want to be sitting here for like three years waiting for this to render <laughs> so I usually put that down to 300 and then 
Yeah, you could. I don't really play with any of these settings, but I do go to color management down here. And then I do go to the look. And then I usually put it at like high contrast just to put up the contrast and make it look more realistic. It just really just helps the picture. So that's usually the only thing I touch in this area. And then that's really it. Now let's go to setting up the picture. So what you want to do is you want to hit shift day again. Okay, shift day is y'all bestie. I told y'all this. Then you want to go to camera. Okay, once you go to camera. Oh, also you 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 could you could also get out of this mode and go back to this mode if you are lagging. You don't don't you do not need to stay in this mode the whole time. Then you want to hit the little camera angle here that says toggle the camera view. So you want to hit that and then it is basically going to bring you to the camera view. So what you want to do is you want to hit the little arrow here, then you want to go to view, then you want to go to camera to view. Um, so this is kind of like, I like to do it this way because it follows the way how like your camera moves and stuff and it's just easier, it's just always easier for me to do it this way and then it just follows my view. So yeah, I like to do it like this way. You kind of just have to just like fix the camera how you want it, how you want your picture to look basically. Uh, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna do this? Oh, also, also, if you want to change your camera width and stuff, you just need to go to output properties and you could change the resolution of the camera. So if you don't want it 1920 by 1080, you could change it to Instagram size or whatever. So literally just change it here. Also, another thing I would suggest is put your thing on PNG and put it on RGBA color. So I think that's like the best color that you could do it. And then, yeah, I usually don't play with too much of the other settings, but I usually just leave it like this. Alrighty. So I basically have it done. I think I like it. I'm just going to leave it like this, but y'all could kind of like move it how you want. There's also another way to move your camera. So if you hit the camera thing again, you could also move it like this. And then you literally just have to look for your camera. So your camera's gonna look like this. You click it and then you could you could just move it with the arrows. I'm not gonna move mine because I already have mine set up good, but you could also just move it like that. But I'm gonna just leave it like this because it's just, it's just easier. So once you have that done, that's really it. Then you could just render your image. So literally, to render your image, you could just hit F12 or you could go to here and hit render image and then it will start rendering. Alrighty y'all, so the render is done. This is how it looks when it's done. So it looks cute, it looks cute. So y'all, just again y'all, this is just this was a basic tutorial on how to render. This wasn't like a, there was so many, so many things you could do to render your products, but this was kind of just like a basic way on how to render your products. So hopefully this video helped y'all a little bit. And yeah, if y'all have any questions down below, make sure you guys comment, okay? Because I will most likely try to answer y'all and I'm gonna try to come out with more videos for y'all. I probably wanna do like a gameplay video next. I'm gonna do another gameplay video. We gonna continue with this little gameplay series because it's been fun, it's been fun. So yeah, that's probably what we come in next will be a fun, fun gameplay video but yeah i hope this tutorial helped y'all in some way make sure you guys like comment subscribe and make sure you guys follow me on instagram follow me on tiktok because i do post on tiktok now i do have a gaming tiktok and i post very interesting content um you have to go check out my tiktok to see that you you do and make sure you follow my Instagram because I be posting my pictures. Okay, and also, if you guys do want these phones, I do sell these phones. This phone will actually be out in an event soon, so make sure y'all look out. I will be updating y'all on my Instagram when this phone is like officially out, but yeah, I do have phones on my marketplace, so if you are looking into phones, definitely check out them on my marketplace. And yeah, that's really it. Thank y'all so much for watching this video. And yeah, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch y'all in my next video. Bye!